Fubuki class of destroyers built for the Imperial Japanese Navy in the interwar period were certainly ahead of their time, introducing several new design features that became standard on future Japanese destroyers. Being known as the special type destroyers, the 24 ships could be broken down into three subgroups, with the final four destroyers of the class being so different that they could be considered their own class. The ships of the Fubuki class surpassed in firepower even some of the Japanese light cruisers at the time of their construction. The ships went on to see service in World War II and be extremely valuable to the Japanese throughout the war. One of them being the namesake of the class Fubuki, which was completed in 1928 and saw service from the outset of the Second World War, assisting in the invasion of Malaya and then the Battle of Sunda Strait, with her career ending in the Battle of Cape Esperance in October of 1942. Japanese destroyer development focused on bringing a heavy torpedo load against the enemy battle line, which meant that these destroyers tended to be larger ships with a large torpedo armament. From the Imperial Japanese Navy in the Pacific War by Mark Still, he writes, This translated into a ship maximized for surface engagements at the expense of other missions. Such an approach was epitomized by the introduction of the special type destroyers, which carried an impressive torpedo armament. The basic design precept was carried forward to the next five classes of Japanese destroyers. This also marked the Japanese destroyer primarily as an offensive weapon, maximized for its role as a night combat torpedo platform. The Washington Naval Treaty had an effect on the Imperial Japanese Navy, as it placed them in an inferior position regarding capital ships as compared to the United States or the United Kingdom. In an attempt to bridge this gap, the Japanese built other ships that weren't restricted by this naval treaty and armed them as powerfully as possible. The Fubuki class's design work began in October of 1922, with the initial proposal being a 2,000-ton design that made it ideal for the endurance needed for long-range Pacific operations, with the space for the machinery needed for high speeds and the heavy armament. The design that was eventually chosen was a smaller 1,750-ton design, with the condition being that no loss of firepower would occur. These destroyers had powerful machinery, certainly an increase from previous Japanese destroyers, with four boilers giving steam to two geared turbines, giving these destroyers a top speed of 35 knots, with a range of 5,000 nautical miles. A key distinction between the first group and the second group is the first nine destroyers of the class, or the first group, had massive air ducts with the two stacks, with the last destroyer of group one, Uranami, getting rid of the large air ducts and adopted the new design of integrating the ventilation ducts into the platforms built around the stacks, the stacks of Group 1 being circular, while the ships of Group 2 had rectangular-shaped stacks. All ships of Group 2 adopted the modified ventilation systems found on the Uranami. Improvements to the hull's design happened in these destroyers, causing improvements to seaworthiness. The well deck was removed in the front of the bridge, which made it possible to extend the forecastle further aft. The forecastle was raised one deck to reduce the effect of heavy seas on the forward gun mount. Taking from the Mutsuki class, the S-shaped curved bow was retained, but the flare was increased, and the hull all the way back to the first smokestack was flared somewhat to increase seaworthiness. The bridge was larger than in previous classes because it needed to clear the 5-inch mount placed forward, which we'll talk about later. With the completion of Fubuki in 1928, even with efforts to reduce weight, with the use of welding on the hull and lighter alloys above the main deck, the ships were still overweight by around 200 tons became an even bigger issue with the ships of Group 2, with an even larger bridge and a heavier Type B mount. On top of that, once entering service, they received shields for their torpedo mounts, further increasing the weight. Because of this, the ships had some serious stability issues. The first sign of danger was when a destroyer with the same principles of the class capsized in March of 1934. An investigation showed that the ships were very top-heavy. Still, before modifications could occur, in September of 1935, when exercising east of Japan, the ships of the Japanese fleet ran into a typhoon, with several special type destroyers losing their bows, with more receiving damage to their bridges and hulls. Because of that, the entire class was returned to the dockyards between 1935 and 1938 to strengthen their hulls and reduce top weight. With the bridge being reduced and the height of the stacks reduced, not only that, but the magazine stowage was reduced. And torpedo reloads were reduced from 9 to 3 but they also tried to increase the weight down in the hull, resulting in a heavier overall displacement and a decreased maximum speed of 34 knots. The armament of the destroyers increased by 50% as compared to the previous Mutsuki class, 
as the new 24-inch torpedoes were very good. With that, each ship carried three triple torpedo launchers. Originally, each of the three mounts carried a reload, with an impressive 18 torpedoes the destroyers could launch. Still, with the previously mentioned changes, the destroyers would carry 12. The main battery of the destroyers were six 5-inch guns and three twin turrets, one forward and two aft. For the first time in Japanese destroyer design, they were provided with a weatherproof gun house with splinter protection. Group 1 carried the Type A 5-inch mount with only a 40-degree elevation, meaning they were only suitable for low-level targets, while Group 2 was fit with the Type B mount with a 75-degree elevation. However, the time to train the gun was very slow, so it was ineffective as an anti-aircraft gun. The original anti-aircraft armament was a pair of 7.7mm machine guns fitted to the second stack. These were later augmented in the war with first twin 13mm mounts in the front of the bridge and later twin 25mm guns. While later in the war, a 5-inch mount was removed on some ships to make room for more 25mm mounts. These ships were augmented with as many as 15 25mm mounts in triple, twin, and single configurations by the end of the war. Yugiri was the first unit to receive radar, receiving a number 22 set in November of 1943. Ships in order of completion from Fubuki in 1928 to Ushio in 1931 from groups 1 and 2 were the Fubuki, Shirayuki, Hatsuyuki, Miyuki, Murakumo, Shinomi, Usugumo, Shirakumo, Tsunami, Uranami, Ayanami, Shikinami, Asagiri, Yugiri, Amagiri, Sagiri, Oboro, Akebono, Sazanami, and finally Ushio. The career of the first special type destroyer and the namesake of the class, Fubuki, is an interesting one. She began the war assigned to Destroyer Division 11, supporting the invasion of Malaya, British Borneo, and the Anabas Islands during the first months of the war. She was next assigned to support the invasion of the Dutch East Indies in February of 1942, participating in the Battle of Sunda Strait, where the cruisers USS Houston and HMAS Perth were sunk, following the Battle of the Java Sea. Then in April of 1942, she supported the Kidu Butai for their raid into the Indian Ocean, where, much like other escorts, she didn't do anything of particular note. She also participated in the Battle of Midway in June, helping to provide anti-aircraft fire with her limited capabilities for Admiral Isoroku Yamamoto's main force. Then moving into the South Pacific in August of 1942, where her story gets more interesting. As you see, the Americans had gained a foothold on the island of Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands chain. In combination with the Cactus Air Force based out of Henderson Airfield, and with the cruisers, destroyers, and other smaller craft patrolling the waters surrounding Guadalcanal, it made things difficult for the Japanese to get reinforcements and supplies to their forces on Guadalcanal. Starting in August of 1942, under the command of Rear Admiral Raizo Tanaka, destroyers were used in nighttime missions to carry men and supplies to the waters off Guadalcanal. In successive missions, destroyers brought supplies in. Later on in the campaign, supplies were stored in drums lashed together with ropes, where the destroyers would steam in close to shore, then drop the drums overboard for small craft to retrieve them for the troops. These fast resupply and reinforcement missions, by cover of night, were soon referred to as the Tokyo Express, in which Fubuki participated in a number of these missions, being present for 11 resupply or patrols off Guadalcanal. Following the Battle of Savo Island, resulting in a victory for the Japanese striking force under Vice Admiral Gunichi Mikawa, with the Allied forces losing multiple cruisers and destroyers. During the preceding time, Admiral Norman Scott prepared his light forces, namely during the last two weeks of September. While not on escort duty, his cruisers practiced their craft, with daily gunnery practice and high-speed night tactical maneuvers to prepare them, as the Japanese ships and crews had proved themselves more than capable in night battles. This training would be put to the test on the night of October the 11th through the 12th as Admiral Aritomo Goto led two separate groups, the Bombardment Force, which Goto personally commanded, consisting of his flagship Aoba, Furutaka, Kinugasa, the destroyers Fubuki, and Hatsuyuki, where they were supposed to shell Henderson Airfield. Meanwhile, the reinforcement group consisting of the fast seaplane tenders Nishin and Chitose, with the destroyers Asugumo, Natsugumo, Yamagumo, Murakumo, Shirayuki, and Akazuki were to anchor off Tasafaranga and send ashore heavy artillery, ammunition, and equipment, as well as a battalion of men. As Rear Admiral Goto's cruisers steamed their way south to shell Henderson Airfield, with Fubuki on the starboard side of Aoba, 
On the evening of October the 11th, they were met by the cruisers San Francisco, Salt Lake City, Boise, Helena, the destroyers Fahrenheit, Duncan, Laffey, Buchanan, and McCalla. Task Force 64, as the force was designated, led by Scott, formed themselves into a single line with the destroyer Fahrenheit leading the American formation. Scott headed on a northeasterly course and caught the Japanese off guard when a hail of 5-inch, 6-inch, and 8-inch projectiles began hitting Aoba and the surrounding ships. Aoba veered to starboard, signaling earnestly that she was Aoba, as Goto thought the ships attacking him were Japanese. It was reported that he was screaming Bakayaro, idiots, as his ship was hit repeatedly. Aoba was severely damaged and limped off. As the American line turned and began hitting the other ships in the formation, namely the cruiser Furutaka, the Fubuki maneuvered, making a turn to starboard. In the process, she came dangerously close to the American battle line and was pelted by cruiser gunfire. Through the damage she sustained here, she sank some time after. Unusually, 109 crew were saved by American ships after the battle. As for the rest of the battle, the Japanese lost the cruiser Furutaka, while the crippled Aoba and Kinugasa managed to escape. With the Americans losing the destroyer Duncan and the Fahrenheit being damaged, while the cruisers San Francisco and Boise were damaged. I think the outcome of Cape Esperance is best described in Neptune's Inferno, the U.S. Navy at Guadalcanal by James D. Hornfisher. Though the U.S. Navy had a victory to celebrate, its immediate benefit to the men on Guadalcanal was negligible. The reinforcement group that had sailed ahead of Goto benefited from Scott's preoccupation with the cruisers. Eluding detection, it reached Doma Cove on Guadalcanal's north coast, unloading its cargo of artillery, vehicles, men, and supplies, and escape before the rise of morning. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the special type destroyers of the Japanese Navy. I'd like to cover more ships of the Imperial Japanese Navy, however, finding sources is very difficult. If anyone can recommend some books, it would be greatly appreciated. Although, I could have covered the Battle of Cape Esperance in more detail, it's not really what the video was about, but I am interested to hear if you all would enjoy if I covered more battles. Anyway, please remember to like and subscribe as it will help the channel to grow.